Hey guys, welcome back. Patrick here. Today we're going to be taking a look at the geometries built into the 3.js and trying to avoid some of the common pitfalls that may be involved with using the geometries. Um, I had to do a little bit of experimentation and do a little bit of research to figure this out. It wasn't very well documented. Uh, so let me go over exactly what I've discovered. Now I'm going to open up uh, an older scene that we built, this one in particular, and we're just going to make some slight modifications to it. I'll go ahead and pull that up. Alright, you see right here I've added a new uh, text feature right above this one, and it's a new .3.mesh, and we're calling the text geometry along with the text material, and we're assigning a position right above that. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save on that, and refresh, and you can see that appears right above there. Alright, so real simple, just basically calling new object, same exact thing. That's great, wonderful, it's appearing great. Now, one thing we're going to try and do now is we're going to change this to a line. Alright, makes sense, it's going to be a line, um, and this will turn it into a line object. Okay, you can see it's not rendering whatsoever, so what the heck is going on here? Let's, uh, let's inspect element on that. Alright, so we're getting the, these errors right here. Now, from what I can tell, if we go ahead and grab this text object, and we're going to call it ahead of this one right here. So let's try that now. Hit save, refresh. All right, now it's calling fine, and it's appearing. We can see our text object. Whoop! We can see our text object right there, and it's appearing. All right, so why is this? Why, why is it doing this? Uh, let's try and figure that out. All right, so this time around we will cut it, or actually let's not cut it, let's look at that code and see why that isn't working. All right, again, same error right there. Okay, so why is this happening? Well, the reason is, is because you can't edit the geometries after you've assigned it. That's fine. Well, we're just calling the same geometry. Technically, we're not. I had to do a little bit of thinking on this. This line object has different geometries than the mesh. So when we instantiate it as a mesh or as a line, it changes everything around and it doesn't work anymore. So what is? how does this limit us? Okay, uh, let me explain real quick. Let's take a look. We're going to open up Blender real quick and we're going to see how this could limit us. All right, there may be a point in Blender if you're working with files, then you may want to edit things. You may want to change things around. Um, one good example is we're looking at this cube, and let's say we want to deform it. Okay, so we're going to go into edit mode on this cube right here, and we're going to begin to deform it. Okay, how are we going to do that? We're just going to grab some vertices and pull along them, push and pull. And this may be something that we're, we're calling out at a later point, you know. Um, and maybe we're doing this in the 3.js file, we're doing this. Okay, so we can push and we can pull on these pieces, and we can edit it any which way we want. Uh, but let's say we want to deform it some more. And we do so by do adding a cut loop going through it. Alright, this is not possible uh, presently in 3.js. Okay, so what happens right here is that we add these new vertices to this piece and now we can push and we can pull on this and affect it any which way we want. However, we can't do that because the way 3.js works is that when you call all your your geometries originally, um, they, are initi they are initialized and they're stored, okay? And it doesn't allow you to add new geometries like this. So what's the workaround? The workaround is is that you need to call everything in the beginning and hide things, essentially. So this is a no-no. Uh, hopefully one day they'll kind of address that, but when I was reading through the documentation on it, uh, it appeared that just calling a whole new geometry is just as effective as trying to do something like this. So in an older version, I believe, of 3.js, they did allow you to do some level of manipulation like this where you could turn one geometry into another. Uh, but they have since removed that feature and they just want you to pretty much load a whole new geometry up into the seam. So when we look at this geometry, technically as the line and or the mesh, it's, oops, sorry, I'm using a pen right now, and let me zoom out on that. It's different than when we were looking at the other one that was the solid. 
All right, so that leads to the next uh, piece of code that we'll take a look at. And I'm gonna provide a link for this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, close this little piece up. And I'm gonna go into my folder and I'm gonna copy seven, example seven into the main folder. I've been saving them all in, into little folders right here and I'm just copying and pasting the new scripts one by one. And I'll just replace that. And now when I open up that WebGL, we should be left with our next piece. And go ahead and hit refresh on that. All right, so this is our next one. This is how you would properly do it, okay? So we have this geometry right here, and you can see you have a vertice here, vertice here, vertice, vertice here. All right, so if we switch over and change the line shape on it, and you'll now notice that we have a whole lot more vertices. And this is what I was referring to, this kind of, this overall issue that you have with geometries. And it, it did take me a little bit of time to figure this one out. Um, so you can see that this geometry is completely different than this geometry because of the location of the vertices and how it's calculating it. So just be aware that this is a common pitfall that you might encounter. This might be a problem and you might want to try and avoid it. So let me show you how I went ahead and avoided it. And we'll just go ahead and open up that file. All right. So this is pretty simple. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to call all of these geometries right here. And I'm going to set them all as variables. All right. Along with the materials and some other um, stuff up here that I've called. I might have accidentally left some stuff in here I didn't need when I was fooling around. All right. Now I'm creating an array for the line that's all these specific geometries. Okay. So basically I've created an array. Um, specific to all the line geometries, and then I've created an array that's sp specific to all of the mesh geometries. So essentially, there are two completely separate geometries that I've assigned to it. Okay, and then we'll just we'll initialize our our uh, materials in an array. So I have a, a line material and a mesh material as a materials array, and then. I did this because maybe at a later point you got, you guys might want to jump in and take a look at this code and start adding uh, more materials to this array and fiddling around with it. So you can easily do this and start adding parameters in that you might potentially want to look at. Uh, you could add the, that I use the mesh basic material, but there's no reason that you couldn't do a mesh Fong material, a mesh Lambert material, any of these are all are different options that you could have. But this basically gives you a starting block to building things where you can play around with all the different materials. All right, so we're assigning a position for our shape, and we're assigning a position for our mesh, and we're going to add the shape in, to initialize. So when we hit refresh, you'll see that this line shape is the very first thing we see. And that's what we've kind of called here and added to the scene. And then we've assigned the camera position right here, along with our DAC GUI. This allows us to change our colors, so you can look at that. And uh, I don't know if I went over this, but you can create folders for everything. Um, you simply initialize a variable, and I did a rotation folder, a shape folder, and a material folder. And then you just do add folder, add folder, add folder, and you can put the label on them like so. And then simply, as opposed to just adding the dat GUI, um, add color and so and so, what you would do is you would basically call out the folder and add the very the the parameter that you want to edit with it, and you could do it that way. Okay, so that's just another option. All you do is just use the add folder function. It's built right into the dat GUI, so we're calling the dat GUI, adding the dot folder, and then calling that variable and assigning it. And then from there, we can just do add controls and so on. All right, so we're adding first. We're adding a folder to this, um, and that's going to hold our line shape. And then we're going to specify the name of it, line shape, right here. And we're going to say basically, um, if the value of this is true, then what it's going to do is remove the mesh and add the shape and it's going to be a new line geometry to form and materials okay so the GUI controls dot form basically 
is a value that we've assigned in this list right here. So we have zero through eight, and each one has a parameter, and that refers to the array number up top here. So this goes zero through eight, essentially. We always start at zero with arrays. Okay, so basically, you're saying that that number right there, GUI controls.form, so here's our dot form and GUI controls, and that number is zero through eight, so whatever that number is, and that's your new shape that's gonna be in here. And the same thing goes for down here. So if we were to change the form up here, these are basically numbers, zero through eight, we can go through and we can look at all these different values. And you can see you can get some really awesome stuff out of the line array. All right, and again, we can turn that off and we can look at it as a wireframe. Again, this wireframe is a dot mesh, and you can see the difference between that. You can also see the difference between how a, uh, a torus and a ring are kind of different shapes. Um, the torus kind of goes inward, um, all at the same distance, I believe, versus a donut that doesn't. We can turn off that wireframe. You can see that. Again, the differences between those. All right, so that's how that works. This basically, the else condition is pretty much the exact opposite. So that enables it to just kind of turn on and off. You can see the folder right here. Okay, here's our next condition. Basically, these are the options. Um, and so this, uh, this top one, this is the form one that we were just looking at. That's this right here. And you basically assign the list item right here and you notice that the list as opposed to an array that you can put in here uh, list items are actually done with these brackets right here and then you do your the name of it and then the number that you're assigning to it okay and then what we're just saying right here is if that value equals zero and the GUI controls is line shape is equal to true then it's gonna remove the shape and add the mesh um, and then and so on. Actually, I just did it in this one to remove both because I was copying and pasting. Technically, you you could probably delete one or the other of these and uh, trim down the code a little bit. I was just being a little bit. Um, I was caught. I was going a little copy paste happy with this. So clearly, this would would really be the exact opposite. But this really keeps it so that there's only one object um, on the screen uh, at all the time, pretty much. All right. Okay, so then we go through our else ifs, and this is the same one. Basically, if it's false, then you're going to be um, adding a mesh, and if it's true, you're going to be adding a line, and then we just call out the array. That's the 0, 0 value, followed by the 1, 1 value, 2, 2, 2, 2, and just pretty much down the line, one for each of these, and that just, and I'm not going to go through every single one of these, but it's just calling out the array and double checking to make sure uh, everything's correct. Okay, so that is pretty much it. There's not, not a whole lot more that's going on. It's a very simple function, but I think it kind of explains what potential pitfalls you could have uh, when it comes to dealing with geometries and things to be aware of. So just in the, in the future, um, if you see anything that's referring to, um, I believe it's the, the, the geometry buffer, an error like that, this could possibly uh, be a problem where you're assigning something that has a different geometry. Uh, and this is one of the potential ways that that could happen is through the line and the mesh. Because uh, your scene is just going to basically, you need to declare these things all, all differently. And again, going back to that, that blender example where you see how I added that new geom that new cut line going through there how that would be potentially a big no-no in 3.js. Okay, so just something to be aware of. Uh, I'm going to, again, post a link to this. Uh, and uh, The next thing we're going to be looking into uh, will be some more... Let's see, what are we going to be doing next? Um, well, we'll have to take a look and see what we do next. Anyways, uh, thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe.